MotoApex.com and I want to introduce a video that I think is going to be really helpful to Moto Apex viewers and it's about helmet selection and the participants in the video are Matt Lynn from Tucker Rocky which is a motorcycle apparel and related items distribution company. Matt reps the RE uh, helmet line and knows a lot about it um, and is also a former racer so he's got a lot of knowledge on this topic and so does Sean from Atlanta Motor World, also in this video. Between the two, you're going to see a discussion of helmet selection between two really experienced riders. So while this video is a little bit on the long side, I think it's time well invested because by the time you watch this about 15 minute video, you're going to know a lot about helmet selection, you're going to know about the RE product line, and you'll know why you're going to want to spend uh, more than it, the, the cheap $100 helmets you'll see online, you're going to want to go well above that. Uh, as I said in my other helmet selection video, I sort of pointed to a price point of $150 to get a Snell rating. You're probably going to, to really get a helmet that you want to wear for many years to come. You'll probably even spend above that price point. But again, I think you'll understand the reason for that by the end of this video, um, which is We'll talk about you know construction quality of helmets and ventilation and comfort and, and that type of thing and proper fit. So I hope you enjoy this video. Thanks for coming to MotoApex.com and as always, ride safe and take care. Sean with Atlanta Motor World. I'm here with Matt Lynn from Tucker Rocky, world famous racer, and he's going to explain to us today about Rye helmets. Yeah. So. Uh, I have a little bit of background in racing. Uh, I work for Tucker Rocky. I'm a representative of Tucker Rocky, but we sell the Arai product. So um, some questions that might be out there about the product itself is, first off, whenever people think of Arai, they think of a premium product. And it's really hard to get an idea of how much, you know, to grasp the actual product itself um, without being able to see the inside of it. So I brought a couple, uh, a couple props with me today. Uh, right here I have a shell from a RX-7 or a Corsair. And this is a, just a raw shell. This is one that was, uh, that was refused off the line um, for what it, it didn't meet tolerances. So I brought this to actually, so you can see the technology that's in the shell. And what you'll notice is that it has the uh, structural net um, composite that is uh, directly related to, to the RX-7 itself, uh, or the Corsair. Um, it also has the peripheral belt structure. And just, it's, it's a good prop to just see exactly uh, Arise philosophies behind helmet construction and to really look at and see the technologies behind the product themselves. Um, Arai believes in, in, they use a lot of organic shape. Uh, first of all, they use an organic shell shape, which is that of, a, of an egg. Um, more or less, you'll notice a smooth, round surface. Um, they also believe so much in the organic shapes that they, they go with a random uh, array of fiberglass uh, in the actual shell, that, that which mimics a bird nest of what, what you find in nature. Because if you've ever played with a bird nest, they're really strong and durable. This also helps disperse the energy over a random amount of fibers and not just down any sort of line. So it's really going to disperse the energy in the case of an impact on, uh, on the asphalt uh, or anything else that you might hit. Um, I also brought with me what is uh, inside the helmet, which is your EPS foam. And as you can see, the colors represent different uh, densities of foam themselves. And this is a, a technology that's proprietary or I that has not been able to be duplicated in, in 20 years. Um, each color is going to represent a different density. So you're going to have firmer density foam the, the closer you get to the eye port or an opening. Uh, and it's going to get softer as you get to a, a bigger, wider surface that you might actually have an impact in. So this is great to really see the technology that's actually in an Arai helmet and, um, and really dissect it. This is all for energy absorption, correct? Yes, this is. So this is, the, you know, the, the shell itself is designed to protect you from uh, any kind of any kind of protrusions that might uh, come into the, you know, into into the helmet itself, and it's to help protect the EPS liner and your head. Um, it's also designed in the event of an impact to disperse the energy as the first line of defense, 
And also, if you're doing, you know, whenever you crash, you, there's no telling what you might hit, um, sliding, glancing, bouncing, anything like that. So that's what the shell is, the actual hard shell is designed to do, where this is actually designed to protect your, uh, to, to absorb the, the impact from the internal force, so, so your head actually moving towards the shell. Um, and that's, that's pretty much the gist of it right there. With that, with kind of going into that, we'll, we'll segue into Arise product lineup. They have uh, nine different models. We have four here. We don't have the off-road models or the two, um, what I call would be a three-quarter helmet uh, or the new Defiant that they just released this year. So um, we start out with the Vector 2, which is going to be kind of the, the it's going to be for the, the rider who wants to start out in Arise, who wants to, who's just getting started. It's kind of the entry-level Arise, so to speak. It's still going to have all the same characteristics of every Arai helmet, which is that, that they're handmade, hand-checked. Each shell can take up to 27 steps to make, and they're all hand-checked. Um, they go through very, very scrutinous uh, checking in the shell to make sure that everything is the correct thickness, the, weight, the correct weight, everything like that. Um, they mix the resin several times a day for each uh, de depending on the conditions uh, in the factory, barometric pressure, temperature, humidity, all that type of stuff. So even though this is an entry-level helmet, you're still going to get all the same quality that goes all the way up to uh, to, to the highest end um, helmet, which would be the Corsair 5 or, or even what they provide for, for any of their Formula 1 or MotoGP guys. You're still going to get a great helmet that's all hand-checked and handmade. And this is a guy who realizes he doesn't have a $100 head right. needs to protect himself. Exactly. You're looking at a helmet that's, uh, you know, in a solid, solid graphic way. It's probably going to start you around a mid four, four hundred dollars, four hundred fifty bucks uh, on up, depending on the on the graphic. Um, a couple of things that this model offers is uh, it's going to have um, great venting. Uh, one one vent central right up front. It's going to have some a nice uh, a nice diffuser to suck the exhaust to get that uh, hot air out of your helmet. Um, it's going to have a, a standard comfort liner, um, not one that's uh, that is going to be like a dry uh, a dry cool or anything like that. But it is going to feature what's unique with the ride this year is they've come out or not this year, but in their models they've come out with the FCS system or the facial contour system. So it is the cheek pads are actually going to have a five millimeter peel away layer, so you can really custom fit um, the helmet for anybody and, and really dial it in so that way they get that nice comfort if. Maybe they it fits fit in the crown of their head, but the cheek pads are just a little bit too snug on their cheeks, and they want a little bit more custom fit. Um, it's also going to feature their uh, um, temporal uh, adjustment. The Vector Two has it, the Signet Q has it, and um, the XD Four and uh, the Defiant all have the temporal adjustment pad, so that way you can really dial in the fit. If it's just pressing you just so, so a little bit on the temples, then you can peel away a few millimeters inside the actual helmet itself and, and you'll be able to customize that fit. So this is a great entry level helmet to really get you, ex to, to really experience and ride at an affordable price, but to realize, hey, my head is worth more than a hundred bucks. So, um, I know, go ahead. Now on the fitment, something we constantly fight, especially with new riders as they come in and they all want to buy helmets that are too and fitting them, and I'll ride those different shapes as well, correct? Exactly, you're, you're correct. Um, Arai has uh, two different shell shapes that we bring over here to the United States, which would be a round oval and a long oval. I'm sorry, an intermediate oval and a round oval. They also offer a round oval, but we don't have that particular shell shape uh, imported to the United States because there's not quite as many people that, are, that have a round oval heads. That would be kind of more uh, to, to the Asian ethnicity, I guess. Um, is what they what they associate that with. Um, so we have a long oval and an intermediate oval. Um, the Vector 2 is going to be a great helmet that's going to offer a real intermediate fit for an intermediate oval. It's going to be really good. Like I said, it's got the, the FCS system, the facial contour system, and the temporal removable uh, um, liner pads, so that way you can really dial in the fit. Um, you can get it nice and, and true for your circumference of your, uh, of your head and you're also going to have it nice for your cheeks. That being said, you know, every time that, that somebody comes in to get fit for an eye helmet, they should get their head measured because the number one thing is to have that correct fit. You know, everybody, a lot of people want to base fit off of cheek pads and how it feels around their cheeks, but that it might fit perfectly around the crown of their head, but it might be a little bit snug on their cheeks, so they want to go up a size, which 
then all of a sudden they've compromised the fit around the crown of their head for a comfort. Well, with the FCS system and being able to really adjust the cheek pads, um, we hope to, to eliminate people's comfort, so to speak. They're, they're wanting to be judging their fit based on immediately right off how the cheek pads feel versus how it fits around the crown of their head. Right. So really getting that measurement around the crown of your head and dialing in the cheek pad fitness secondary is, is crucial to having a great fit um, for your helmet. So yeah, That's important for both noise and safety as well. Exactly. Right? You're 100% correct. Um, so we'll kind of segue, I guess, into the next one, which would be the Signet Q, which would be go to the long oval side of, uh, of the helmets. This is going to help. This is basically for guys that have a shape similar to my, my head shape. I'm, I'm a little bit longer uh, front to back than I in narrow side to side. So for me, I'm a 57 centimeters. I'm kinda, I kind of look at it like I'm on the small side of a medium, but on the big side of a small. So the Signet Q small actually fits me perfect around the crown of the head, and then I can dial in the cheek pads to get a, a little bit snugger fit because I like a snug fit with the cheek pads um, so I don't get a whole lot of buffeting or anything. So that's what this is designed for for people who have an, uh, a long oval head that's going to be a little bit front a little bit longer front to back and um and thinner side to side so with the signet q they they went even longer than their previous model which they had which was the profile um this is actually i want to say it's uh it's 10 millimeters longer so you get even more uh, could, you, you can really notice it. I can really certainly notice it. Um, if I was to wear uh, a Vector 2 or even an RXQ, I would just, I, in order for comfort, I would have to step up a size to a medium to be, uh, for it to fit me correctly around the crown of my head so I didn't have any hot spots or pressure points. Um, with this helmet, I'm able to step down to a small, which was my actual size um, that I measure out to. So, so it's, it's very nice to have these options um, to really select the helmet shell shape based on your head size instead of just a, a one-size-fits-all scenario. Um, and that's why, you know, part of the reason uh, Arise philosophy is that what it is, which is the helmet's number one job is energy absorption, and in order to protect the rider, you have to have the correct fit. Right. So the adjustability you guys have and the almost custom tailoring it, I know has helped a lot of people that maybe, because it's frustrating for us as a dealer, somebody may love a specific helmet, but they don't fit in it. Like, I know personally when I've got a Corsair, and it's the adjustability that made it fit me because my head isn't exactly perfect for other brands where I pop on a large and, hey, that's it, that's perfect fit, that's a clinic. And I know the adjustability finally got me in a Corsair, and I love it because it's light and it fits perfect and the liner's really nice. And you put a lot of miles on the helmet, and that's where your cheap helmet, you know, two years later, you're throwing it away, or a year later. Exactly, so. exactly, because the fit's custom tuned, and it's also going to be quieter, you know, I think we've touched on that too, but just having a, a helmet that fits correctly, you'll notice that the, the wind noise is a lot less than something that's, that's riding bigger and letting wind come up into your, uh, into your ears. So, um, that going forward, we're going we're gonna to move on to the RXQ here, which would be an entry level to the, uh, the very, um, the, high, the highest end of the Corsair 5 here. Um, this is, it's on the same platform. The, different, the main thing about the, uh, the RXQ is it is going to be an intermediate oval fit. Um, it's going to have two nice uh, vents up top to really get some air in there and, and you know cool you down. And then it's also going to have some really nice uh, exhaust vents up in the top and right, uh, right here down, down below. Um, it's going to have a nice removable washable neck roll. And it's going to have neck roll venting, so that's really nice. Um, and of course, again, you know, it has the facial contour system, so you can really dial in the fit. But this is going to be for your intermediate oval guys. So, uh, you know, somebody who's who's got what I would say maybe a, a more normal head than me. <laughs> so, um, also throughout the lineup, you'll notice uh, the brow venting, which is a which is a key. Uh, for a ride. Um, this is also going to allow air to flow right over your temporal arteries, which is going to cool your head down because you have two arteries that flow right up here, um, right by your eye sockets. So, so those are going to allow you to cool down. And they, there's no point, and Arai believes that there, you should not put vent holes the closest to the biggest opening in the helmet, which is the eye port. Um, that's why they went ahead and developed these brow vents. So you're still getting that nice of venting, but you're not compromising safety by having holes um, really close to the eye port itself. So 
Uh, you're still gonna get, it looks as though you see a really good airflow because it's kind of at the top of the center of pressure, right? Exactly, and, and you know, one thing to note uh, about these helmets, they're definitely more street-oriented helmets. Um, you could take them on the track and you can use them at a track day and have absolutely no problem with them. But one thing that you'll notice is the bending is a little bit more upright. So whenever you're riding in a street position, you're, you're gonna be riding a little more relaxed, so to speak. You're not in an aggressive track position. You're not tucked down. Um, you're definitely a little bit more upright. So this is gonna allow maximum bending for, for while you're just JRA, just riding along. Right. Um, so that, that's one thing to really take note. They've done a lot of development in these helmets. And uh, I mean, the Signet Q fits me like a glove and I love it, so. That'll uh, help guys with noise as well, right? You're you're 100 percent correct with that as well. Um, you know this, the RXQ and the Signet Q are going to be are going to be quiet helmets because they're designed for the street. They're 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 designed for the street rider and the everyday commuter. Commuter. Uh, they're designed for the everyday commuter. So they're you know they they do a lot of testing and take that into consideration. So kind of going up a little bit. Um, also with the uh, the Signet Q and the RXQ. We have now went up uh, significantly in price point, but we've got a lot more cre uh, a lot more creature coverings, better venting, removable neck roll. We've moved to a dry climb liner, so now uh, you know the moisture is really getting sucked away from your head and um, and allowing the the uh, exhaust vents and the the inlet uh, air vents to really do their job and move that moisture away from your head. So we also upgraded to. Uh, um, a pull down chin spoiler which is going to direct the air away from your chin to make it a quieter ride and also help reduce some buffeting of the helmet itself so great great features in both of these helmets um, now we move to the this is the highest level the premium cream of the crop the best product this is uh my track day helmet. yes <laughs> exactly track. track day helmet uh, Moto GP racers wear it, AMA racers wear it. Um, I mean, this is a this is a full blown race helmet. The Corsair 5 uh, has a lot of features to it. Uh, it's, I mean, it's just the best that there is out on the market. You're gonna have where these have uh, two vent holes up front, two exhaust vents in the back here. Um, this is gonna have seven, so it's gonna be you're gonna have one uh, intake right here, and then you have this diffuser system that's also gonna allow massive airflow. So this is gonna be, I don't wanna say the coolest helmet on the market, uh, you know, out of the Arai lineup, but it is gonna be, you're gonna, it's gonna be substantially, it's gonna flow more air because it has more venting. Um, with that being said, it might, be a, it might be a little bit louder too because it is flowing a lot more air, and people mistake that, oh, well, I have the, you know, it's a loud helmet. Well, this is a full-blown track helmet that's made for that aggressive position um, and, and cooling. It has a lot of vents, so it's going to create some noise, a little bit of wind noise. Um, it also has a, a spoiler in the back here that you can uh, adjust to help to help reduce buffeting, wind buffeting, and everything like that. It's going to have your uh, facial contour system, emergency removal, removable cheek pads, uh, your removable neck roll, um, dry climb liner, chin spoiler. Uh, it's Brow vents. I mean, it's it's got a lot going on for it. And this right. looks so like uh, this looks like it's got a little more designed a little more angle to it. Yeah, so it does. Ride, I mean, if you look at riding, so yeah, if you look at the the actual vents um, from these three helmets, you're going to notice that these are a little bit further back. We do have the one vent that's a little bit further forward, but but the actual main vents are going to be a little bit further back and that, that is for that little bit more aggressive position wherever you're a little bit more race position or maybe even you know whenever you're tucked to really get airflow and suck it out um, that's what this these diffuser diffusers are designed to do um, yeah so i mean that is the top of the line right there well worth it thanks for coming out and showing us these are great because it's always so difficult for us on this side of the counter to show people and explain because you have all this beautiful paint over it you know and all these yeah. hand laid graphics and you try to explain all this stuff to people and thanks for dissecting it and coming out and letting people know why you should upgrade to you know a quality helmet yeah thank you very much sean thanks for uh thanks for your time and thanks right. for letting me come out and explain to everybody uh what sets a rock apart from the competition thanks, thanks.